Pistis is a story about a dude named Lane. He moved to the mainland and bought one place to stay. And then one day he went and tried to rent them out. And then he became one real investor man. Explain to me, call different things, but to pay off your mortgage quicker, these guys, they help you get a HELOC or another loan. You go and get that, you pay off your mortgage, and you pay off the HELOC separately. And there's the claim to fame is that you're paying your mortgage off with simple interest. Is there a comment on this? Debunk it or what's, what's going on? It's one of the Australian home loan concept that they've brought to the U.S. now. Where yeah. It's like a HELOC and you use it like your checking account. And so you deposit your money into that, into the HELOC instead of your checking account, that one. I think that's what it is. I mean, obviously, they're getting compensated off you originating that new loan with them. But yeah. they're saying that you pay off your mortgage a lot quicker. You can. Well, possibly. It's funny. It's been a few years since somebody's even asked me about that. It's funny. It was big early on. There, There is a caveat to that because every example they use, the person always has positive cash flow. So they always have more income coming in than their expenses. It's the exact opposite if you're un- upside down each month. Like if you're short each month, it's actually the worst thing that could happen. The only reason that happens is because if you think about it, it's it's really the same concept as just taking every extra dollar you have every month out of your checking account and putting it to your mortgage. It's no different than doing that, really. Um, the difference is, of course, that it's flexible to HELOC. But the thing is, after the you know the Great Recession, you know, I don't trust that banks will keep your leave your loan alone. I mean, if it's a HELOC. They could always change interest rates. They could, uh, they could always say, you know what? If HELOC don't like it, we're going to make it a second mortgage now. So no more use of your line of credit or we're going to cap the line of credit. So you can't go over that. Um, so conceptually, theoretically, you could pay it off faster. I've just haven't seen too many people that have more than they could do on their own. And I'd, again, I'd rather keep my cash available in my possession, not in the bank's control. So yeah, theoretically it can work, but, uh, it's, it's flawed because they always show someone that makes 5,000 a month, but they only have 4,000 expenses or 3,000 expenses. That's what they always show, which basically just means they're putting an extra 1,000 to $2,000 a month on their mortgage. That's all it is. Right. It'd be the equivalent of me going out buying properties with HELOCs, which is just kind of. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd rather do that because you get paid off that. <laughs> right. um, I'm not big on paying off mortgages fast anyways because, I mean, the money's so cheap right now. It's like, man, you know, I, I, I could care less about paying those off quickly. You know, I'd rather build up the money so I have the money to pay it off if I ever choose to, but I don't have to. Right, that mortgage is the probably the biggest asset of all of this stuff, the debt that you're paying at 4% or oh, 5%. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, I mean. It's- I mean, obviously, for real estate investors like myself or people who pick up, you know, these these rental homes, this strategy is definitely not the way to go because you want to put the any cash flow and funds into down payments for new properties. Mm-hmm. Now, what about for, you know, regular people who don't just content with the stock market retiring when they're like 85? I mean, is this a good strategy for them? You know, it could be if they're that saver mentality. I mean, those aren't the people I work with. Like mine are, I, I like to th- look at uh, stewardship as a big thing. Stewardship is like taking the best of the spenders and the savers. Cause really, if you think about it, spenders and savers are both in scarcity. There's never enough. They live in fear. Uh, but stewards, stewards are thinking, how can I make the most of the resources that I have? Right. They're like kind of more of that investor paradigm. So I don't usually meet those people that say, Hey, I think the stock market's awesome. Like usually they come to me because they think, There's got to be something better than this, right? (laughs) Um, but yeah, they could do that. Again, like if I get people like that, like I do have one client, he's, uh, you know, he's Chinese, his family's all Chinese by birth, so he's grew up very strict saver. Um, he lives out in Minnesota. Like with him, you know, we talked about real estate and all kinds of options and he just, he just wasn't feeling it. And he's like a big fact finder, right? Like he just likes to research everything. And I finally just said, you know what? If you're not going to make any decision, we've got money just sitting around. You've got these paid off home equity is doing nothing. You can always do equity later, I guess, and buy real estate if that's your angle. Let's take all this IRA money you have. Let's not lose money with it. Let's take that and at least get into like indexed annuities or something where you make some money, but you're not going to lose any money either. Like you have guarantees. So I had him basically told him to do a strategy between whole life and indexed annuities, you know, and it's like, good. Now you got guarantees. You won't lose money. You'll make at least as much money as the stock market most likely anyways, because especially with tax values, you can consider that, that kind of stuff. And then if you decide to invest, you know, let me know and then we'll hook you up, connect with people. It's all about options. Exactly. Options. Yeah. So in his case, I was kind of disappointing because I knew he could make way more money. Like cash flow, he could probably like seriously get at least half of his income replaced. But he just, he, he's just so scared about doing anything outside the norm that I was like, okay, well, let's do kind of the norm, just a safer version of the norm. All right. It, it's just kind of like for every thousand people that come to this podcast, 
Obviously, it's real estate, so 900 people aren't going to do anything. Yeah. So out of those remaining 100, I empower them with the information on, on this website and podcasts and blog that probably about 80, 80 of those people can probably do this stuff by themselves. But there's always that 20% that just are like, um, you mean I have to like do something? Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't like the using the word passive income. Because even though it's technically true, um, the thing is, like, I've never, I've noticed that passive income is never totally passive. Like, it's, that's why I call it residual income because I'm like, it's residual. You work in the beginning or you work to get some systems in place so then you can start reaping the benefits later. So it's leveraged, right? But to say, oh, I do nothing for that money. It's like, well, that's not totally true. Like, you gotta do something. You can't just sit around and hope that you get paid money. You gotta do something. You gotta at least take those steps, take that action. You gotta at least be willing to go through the mortgage process, for example, and pick the property or have somebody help you pick it or whatever. There's gotta be work there. But I mean, in those people's defense, I mean, you know, these are people making $300, $400, you know, billable hour. Yeah. And it really doesn't make sense for them to get a a single family home out in the middle of nowhere and and manage it by a far. I mean, it's just their time is more valuable than that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I mean, I love real estate. That's why I'm trying to get these bigger deals and try and create syndications so that these people can participate. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't get much easier or passive than that. I know. That's why having, you know, great, you know, which is hard to find, but great property managers and things like that just to make it easier, you know, be able to be involved, but not have to be involved, right? Like not have to spend the time in it, like have that time freedom to go with the money freedom. That's, that's important to me too. I mean, that's for me, lifestyle is, is what became important after the money. Like after I started to see the money, I'm like, Oh, well, who cares about the money? I want the lifestyle. <laughs> you know, that was the big thing. That's where freedom in my mind comes from. That life insurance stuff one day. I, I'm not a fan of it personally. I, I put all my money into real estate. Mm-hmm. It, it, it took me a while to get used to it too. I had to understand how to make more money doing both. But you you have to completely challenge everything that almost every whole life you know insurance type person teaches you. Like you have to almost do the opposite of what they teach. Yeah, it's just like I'm so skeptic about stock markets strategies, and oh, I yeah. just think that that life insurance stuff is just like the same thing. Yeah, had I not seen it, had I not seen it work, I I would have questioned. Well, I did question it. <laughs> in, in in 2006, like when I met those millionaires, they we were talking about it a lot. I'm like, really? Like whole life sucks. Like you don't make any money with that, and I can make more money doing this. And they're like, no. Once you see that you can make money in two places at once, you'll never go back. And once I got it, it took me a few years because I'd almost like learn outside of those guys too. Once I got it, it was like, now I get it. Okay, that's why I would never ever want to use cash from my savings account to buy a property. I always want to be, you know, using the money for like from life insurance and stuff like that and leveraging it that way. So now I can make money in the life insurance and I can make money in the real estate too. Huh. So maybe, maybe sooner than later, huh? <laughs> we'll have that talk. <laughs> it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. I'll you talk bet. to you later, man. Talk to you later. Touch. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third-party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you are the only person who is going to look out for your best interests.